All right, coaches, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Michael Cantrell. I'm the director of Championship Coaching Systems, and we're excited to uh, to have you with us tonight. Coach uh, Mazzoni from UCLA is going to be sharing about uh, the game-changing end zone offense. It's going to be more of an introductory look into end zone. Make sure you get a, get a chance to see what it's all about. We're excited to have him here uh, tonight. So a lot of guests tonight, not everybody's end zone members. And uh, just a reminder, we'll be recording tonight's webinar. We'll make that link available to you guys who are listening, as well as uh, you know anybody else who hasn't uh, had a chance to hear it. So um, we should have that posted here in the next couple of days. Uh, during the webinar, if you have any questions in your GoToWebinar control panel, there's a blue tab about one, two, three, four, five, six down that says questions on it. You can open that up at any time and type any question that you have for, for Coach Mazzoni. We'll hold those to the end and have a little Q&A session where we'll answer those questions. Uh, because there's so many people registered tonight, uh, we probably won't get through every question. So as a result, if your question doesn't get answered, if you want to email me, Michael, you can do so at questions at championshipsystems.com. Again, questions at championshipsystems.com. We'll go ahead and field those, get them to coach, get everything answered, and then we can take care of it from there. Outside of that, guys, we're really glad that you're here, and we're going to go ahead and get started with Coach Mazzoni. Let me bring him on real quick. Coach, you there? Coach Mazzoni. Yeah, oh, hold on. Yep. All right. Yep. Wait. Wait, let me do this first. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> we heard it, Coach. <laughs> this is like the 15 feet from my refrigerator. Okay. All right, so are we starting? Yep, you're good to go. You've got the screen. Everybody's ready to... Michael? Yep, can you hear me? Hello. Okay. All right. Hey, I really, yeah. First of all, I really appreciate um, you know talking to Michael. This is uh, you know a lot of guys that, that haven't done some of this stuff. Um, it's by no means the answers to everybody's problem. It's just another offense, and there's a there's a ton of great offenses out there, a ton of different ways to score points. With guy, a lot of guys are a lot smarter than I'm. I'm at it. So this is kind of what I just poured myself a nice cold beer here, and we're just gonna like have a little. Like in the old days, like you guys are probably too young to remember this, is what they used to call the fireside chat, all right? Um, but basically, I hope you guys can all see my screen and what I think Michael's going to do at the end, uh, probably about the last 15 minutes or so. We can, uh, I'll just take, we'll just take questions. We can go as long as we, we can, how, we can go over if we need to, all right? But this is kind of what I wanted to do at the beginning. I know this isn't X's and O's, all right? But I really think that I'm kind of leading off with this because I just think this is so important to uh, to whatever you do in life, football, whatever, you know, whatever scheme you're running, whatever defense, offense, special teams, whatever. And this is kind of what we, we build ourselves on, all right? And, um, you know, and so I'm just kind of going to go through some bullet point points I jotted down this afternoon, all right, that what we base everything on. And, and one is, is it is fast focus and finish. I mean, I think it's important that key words that you talk to your kids with key words. And we want to be able to play fast. We want to have, have tremendous focus, all right? And then we always want to finish. Pretty self-explanatory, right? And then we're a huge play the next play team. So we, I always tell our guys we, we have a six-second lifespan. So we definitely live in the moment, all right? We're not going to be a team that, that stops practice or – or is yelling at guys during practice because of the last play. We want them to live in that next play. And then because of that, you have to create time or you have to, have to do a good job of fixing the problems. Um, you know, I don't, think, I, I don't think yelling at a kid that, uh, you know, why didn't he block that guy is fixing the problem. I think making it to him how to block the guy or why he made that throw or why that route wasn't deep enough, okay? Look, you know, watch the film. How can I fix the problems? And then what that helps you with is during the course of a game, all right, is that when you get into a game, there's going to be problems. There always is, all right? So you've got – your kids have to understand is they're – you know, we want to be as positive as you can and just let's find out what the problem was and let's just fix it, all right? And my, and my biggest pet peeve is, hey, we can't run that play is not a fix-the-problem answer, okay? 
if, if you can't run that play for something that the defense is doing, then why the hell you got it in the game plan, okay? So everything you put in offensively should, should ha have the ability to fix any problem that it hits, okay? Next thing I believe in is that schemes don't win games. I, I believe attitude does, and we're huge on attitude. Right, because you don't, you don't, as you see in the bottom, you don't inherit an attitude. You create it, and they're gonna be what you want them to be, and get what you coach for. Okay. Next thing is, this is just kind of like just bullet points, guys. Just kind of thoughts off the top of our head here. All right. Surround yourself with those on the same mission as you. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to be on the field or coach with a guy or coach a guy who's not on the same mission with me. And guess what? Your kids don't want to be coached by a guy that's not on the same mission as they are. Okay, so you gotta, you, you've got to surround yourself. And those guys that aren't on the same mission as you, they will find a way out of the program, all right, or off of your staff. Or they'll decide that's not for them and they'll go somewhere else. That's fine. I'm cool with that. I don't care how good a player he is. I don't care how good a coach he is. If he's not on the same mission as us, all right, then we don't need him around. So you got to – it's important that you surround yourself with those type of guys, like like thinking people like yourself, Okay. We don't rise to the level of our expectations, all right? So in other words, all of us are sitting here thinking, okay, I want to win a Pac-12 championship. You want to win the state championship. You want to beat the Crosstown rival. You want to, you know, win a national championship. You want to be a top 20 team, a top five team, the, best, the number one team, okay? Those are all great. Those are visions, okay? And that's all it is, is a vision, okay? We won't rise to that just because we have the vision, all right? We will fall to our vision, all right, by the level of our training. Okay, so all that stuff talking about, you know, we treat we treat every game, every day, every practice, every drill like it's a Super Bowl. All right, like that is our goal. That drill, that practice, Tuesday practice is our goal is to is to win that day. All right, is is to have the best practice, and we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna win on everything we do on Tuesday, and then we're gonna do it on Wednesday. All right, or it's one on one against the defense. I want to win or it's third down against the defense, or it's team versus your scout, whatever it is, okay? You gotta live in that six second lifespan, all right? Surround, surround yourself with the guys who are on the same mission as you, and then we're gonna always fall to the level of our training, okay? So we wanna win every drill, every practice, every day, okay? I don't care, there, 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 are, no, there, there are no periods off. There are, there are no snaps off. We got a saying on, our, on, our, on offense is that every snap's a game snap. Okay, if you snap the ball, all right, in practice, it's a game snap. Okay, now, if you want to walk through or you want to have a teach period, then fine. Tell them, hey, guys, look, at, take their hats off. All right, hey, we're going to teach. We're going to walk through this, whatever we want to do. But when we're competing, all right, every snap is a game snap. Okay, never mistake, the poten never mistake potential for performance. And what I mean by that is I think you have to create as much competitive situations as you can for your kids in the course of a week leading up to the game, in the course of two days, in the course of spring ball, you know, uh, in the course of the locker room, in the course of in the classroom studying, uh, not only for football, but but maybe maybe in, in school. OK, so you got you got to create competitive situations for them. In everything you do, because I'm not hip to that guy that says, "Oh, don't worry, coach. I'll turn it on on Saturday." Or how many times have have, have we got beat because we got we got guys that freaking run fast, jump, all right, uh, can bench press the, the room and all that, but they're not competitors. Okay. Well, you have to create that competitiveness in them, and I, and I believe you can. All right. And then we just want our guys to be the same guy every day. Okay. And if they, I want my guys to be the same guy every day. Guess what? We got to be the same guy every day. I can't come out to practice one day and man, I'm full of energy. I'm jumping around. I I got tempo, and then the next day maybe I had a, didn't get my cup of coffee in the morning, or I had a stayed out too late the night before, or, or wasn't feeling well, and not have that same energy. So we we have to be the same guy every day, and then we have to demand our guys to be the same guys every day. All right, um, every. Every mission matters, okay? So this vision we have, okay? Well, the, to have a vision, then we must all be in the spirit of the mission. Now, these are all things, these slides, I'll be honest, when I, when I talk to the offense, I, I talk a lot more about this than what we're gonna, than how we're gonna block 4-2 post safety, okay? And we'll get onto that later in this conversation or this talk, all right? The,
the actual and think there's so much to the ad with your football team. And the thing about this is we can't pick and choose when it's convenient to be in the spirit of the mission. All right? It's got to be every moment of every day, just like we've been talking about. It's the same message every day to these kids. All right? All right? And that spirit, that mission, all right, has to be in the way we train, we walk, we talk, we study, we prepare mentally, physically. It's not an option. It's who we are. And I don't mean I don't care if it's a kid, if it's when your kid's at home, he's taking the garbage out, or he's in study hall teaching, uh, studying for a chemistry test, or he's in the weight room, or he's on the football field, or anything he does. All right. Well, I want to. We want to instill in that guy is that's how we live. This is who we are. Okay. These are the things that are, we're the same guy every day, and this is how we attack life, not just football, but life, because this is who we are. Okay. And when you start to create that spirit, all right, of the mission. All right, then that's what creates commitment, because now the kid's in, he's he's he owns it, he's bought in, he's committed to it, all right, and that's what we want. Okay, we're kind of based on a couple things. These are two quotes I like. All right, no, this is by Paul Westall, head who at that time was coaching at the Phoenix Suns. All right, no downtime for your opponent. That's the point of this whole system. Wear them down, and victory will be ours. And a good plan, violently executed now is better than any perfect plan next week. So for a, for I would for me to sit around the office till 2 or 3 in the morning, come up with all these great schemes, and there's a million of them out there, and there's some, like, really smart, smart football coaches that really know their shit a lot better than I do, all right, and have 15 ways that they can attack this coverage and 20 ways they can attack this front and all those things. That's awesome stuff, okay? But I'm, we're not I'm, – I don't want to do that, all right? I want a good, simple, solid plan that I can play with tempo, all right, and I can violently execute it right now. And I can be fast, I can be focused, all right, and I can teach my kids how to finish. All right, here's what we want to do offensively with the offense. So that was just a quick little overview of the mentality of the system because I don't want to sound like I'm uh, Reverend Sharpton or anything, but, you know, it's not a – to me it's not – you know, it's not the offense, it's not the scheme, it's not the plays, it's the way of life, all right? It's how I want my guys to be in everything they attack in life, okay? And uh, so with now with the offense, all right, to, to be able to put, a, to put a program in there or put a scheme in there that these guys can take all these values and place it on, all right? Number one is we're always trying to create space. In any offense, I don't care if you're trying to, if you're a uh, two tight end eye, power eye team, you're trying to, trying to run power. You're trying to create space between the three technique and the seven technique or nine technique so that you can run the power. Okay? If you're a bone team, if you're a West Coast offense, if you're triple digit, if you're, I mean, there's a hundred, if you're uh, the flex bone, I mean, there's some great offenses out there, and they all try to do the same thing create space. Okay? We're trying to create conflict in the defense so all right so so what what that means is, is there's there's certain players that that they have responsibilities on defense so they so we're trying to place these guys in conflict do I stop the pass or do I stop the run do I stop the run do I stop the pass do I take the quarterback or do I take the back do I take the swing or do I take the curl okay we're always we're always creating co uh, conflict in the defense okay and then we're trying to create then we're creating tempo all right, and to keep and to create tempo, all right, you have to keep it simple, all right, and it's got to be uh, we are a repetition offense. All right, I don't remember. I think Marsh is on this thing, and he would have the numbers, but I think in our first in two days or whatever, we had 400 and whatever it was runs called during two days. All right, and like almost 300 of them were just zone read. Okay, because I think I think. Instead of me trying to out scheme a defense or a defensive coordinator, right, I, th I would much rather my kids have run zone read or one back power or or our giant our pin pull play or our curl flat game or our vertical game. All right, I'd like those guys have run that so many times that it doesn't matter what scheme or what front or what coverage or what blitz or what pressure or what stun hits them. All right, they've been there, they've seen it, and they know how to react to it. All right, so now I'm not sitting on the on the sideline guessing. Well, shoot, I called this play. I hope they're in cover two. All right. Oh, shoot, I called this run. I hope there's only five in the box. 
Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. All right, I'm just guessing. All right, I, w I want to play the next play. I want to call a play, have success, and call the next one. Okay, what's the si what the system is built on? Number one and foremost, and I kind of hit on that just now is we do, do not play defense on offense. Okay, and what I mean by that is is that exactly what I just said. I don't want to be the guy that says I can't run that. Okay, because they're getting in this defense. All right, I need to be in the attack mode, and we're all, we've I've been guilty of that many times in the past. All right, sitting there, you're sitting up there at night trying to figure out a game plan. Well, they get in this defense. I can't. Well, we better not run this. We better put this play in, or we better run that play, or we can't run this play. All right, or we get in the course of the game and they start blitzing us. Oh man, we we better not call that. They're going to blitz us. All right, you know we're running naked because the end is the the end is 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 pinning the hip, and then all of a sudden he's not pinning the hip anymore. Oh, we can't run naked. All right, so don't play defense on offense. All right, make that sucker play defense. Okay, get the ball to your playmakers in space and let them create points and yards for you. Okay, so and so we talked about space, conflict, and tempo. Okay, how can you create space and put it in your playmakers' hands? Okay, if I got one receiver who's great at running tunnel screens, or one back who's great at running the under screen, or one receiver who's great at running the go route or post, I would be stupid not to be throwing the post to him. Or throwing the screen to that guy, okay, and throwing it to some other guy. All right, so put it in your playmaker's hands. Okay, tempo. To play fast, you must practice faster. So if you want to be a tempo offense, okay, then you have to push the envelope as hard, as much, and as hard as you can on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until right up until game time. Okay, you have to push the. You have to push the, the pace in practice and it never be satisfied with how fast you're playing. And if part of the, the problem you're not playing fast is because it's communication or they're not getting lined up fast enough or they're not getting the ball back to the official or the line standing around making too many calls, then fix the problem. All right? Limit, limit calls. All right? Come up a better, better way to communicate your, your plays. Go to more one-word plays. All right. Practice your your players handing the ball to the official that spots it after the after the play. Uh, there's there's a ton of little things, and you can cut seconds off how fast you play. All right. Enable your guys to play. All right. If you just fix the problems. All right. Don't change the play. Change the presentation. Okay. Our base our base play is Zoro zone read. Okay. I mean we're gonna run the hell out of that. You got stop zone read with us. Okay. Now there might be. Six ways you, you, you're, you're going to see that play come at you, all right, in the course of a game, all right? So we're not changing the play. We're not changing the base uh, the base rules for our O-line or for the quarterback, all right? They're doing exactly the same thing, but the defense is seeing six different ways this thing is coming at them, all right? And so they have to adjust, all right? So they have to play defense, okay? Protect your plays. I mean, um, that's a that's a as we build an offense, okay, and you put some of your base concepts run or pass in, okay. How do you protect them? All right, how do you protect your plays? I want to call this play, but they're doing this, okay. What's my answer? How am I protecting them from doing this to stop one of my base plays? Because I I just can't say, oh shit, I just won't run it. It's frick, it's one of my base plays, okay. So you have to always as you build an offense, all right. Here's zone read. Okay, they're closing the end. What are we going to do? Oh, we better put zone read with the F give. Oh, they're, they're option switching. All right, then we better put the rip and Liz in. Oh, they're make, they're going six in the box, making us throw the keys, and they're forcing the keys, and we better have a lock in. All right, so those are just ways you protect your plays. And then protect your players. All right, I mean, that's how, that's how we make a living off those cats. Okay, so protect your players. Don't put them in bad situations. All right. If they can't get it done on practice during the week, what makes you think they can get it done on, on Friday night or Saturday afternoon? All right? It's a, I'm not going to waste the time. If I have to rep something, I put in a play and, and, and I'm repping it 20 times and the right guard can never get it right. Okay, what makes me what makes me think he's going to get it right? Oh, he'll eventually get it. Ah, he, I mean, I, I can take spend that time on something much better. Okay? Think players, not plays. Everything is personnel driven. All right, there should be an N on that. 
fence and you put green tear or blue fast or don't his terminology terminology is but we'll hit that a little bit later okay but everything when we you look at it okay where can I put my playmakers in the correct position okay to make plays for me okay so wait well, it, it's 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 third and you know it's third and goal from the three yard line okay don't think play all right think think players okay who's my player who do I want to throw the fade to who do I want to hand the ball off okay play the next play, fix a problem, and then, hey, let them play, all right? Let them have fun. I mean, it's still a game. I, I mean, I think they – I mean, I want them to have fun. All right? I want them to have fun during practice, all right? I want them to have fun during the game. I want them to enjoy the process as much as they can. And yeah, they're going to be tough times, and they're going to bitch at you, and it's going to be hot or those things. Yeah, that happens, all right? But, you know, they're, they're going to they're, – you know, just let them play. Quit second-guessing those kids, all right? If you've coached them well enough and they feel well enough and they took an ownership in your offense, all right, then they should be able to fix problems for you and you, you should just let, let them loose. Let the dogs loose and let them go play. Okay, we talked about that ownership, okay. I, I we really do a, I think we do a good job in, in what I mean by ownership is, is give your players responsibilities, okay. In other words, it might be scouting report. Hey, Jordan Payton, tell me about uh, watch watch a couple games on these guys and get in front of the team and and tell me about their corners. Or or Jake, tell me about their D line. Um, hey, Nate, um, I want you to I want you to look at all our turnovers. You know, in practice this week, and I want you. To, oh, I'm going to put a cut up for you, and I want you to talk to the guys about turnovers, how they should you know how they should protect the football. Okay, so I try to get our players as involved as much as I can. All right, in meetings. Okay, and in meetings, meetings not only on the field, not only in the classroom, but on the field. Okay, because I want them to own the car. They're not renting this car. I want them to, to uh, you know, to own it. Because when you own something, obviously you kind of wax it a little bit more and you vacuum it a little bit more than you used to, and you know you take care of it. So we're really big on on creating ownership by your players. Okay, they obviously have to trust in one another. Okay, team. These are all just kind of, you know, kind of broad things, accountability, okay, be the, un it's a great book by, uh, by Tony Dungy, you know, dare to be the uncommon man, anybody can be, be that guy, you know, that guy that doesn't go to class, that guy that, you know, stands in the back of the line, uh, the guy that never finishes, you know, that's easy to be that guy, you know, we're trying to, we're, uh, you know, I want to talk to my guys about being the guy, all right, be the guy that has ownership, be the guy that trusts the people around you, be the guy that has team ego, he's selfless, all right, and he's, he's accountable, He's going to make mistakes. Fine. Let's play the next play. We'll fix the problem and play the next play. Okay. Repetition, repetition, repetition. I think that's the key to any success. You know, they say that, that, you know, you have to do any kind of act 10,000 times before you get the muscle memory. All right. Throwing a ball, catching a ball, you know, whatever. Okay. So that's kind of the mindset I've got. You know, I want to run freaking Detroit stick. All right. Or draw a stick. I want to run it. 10, if I could, I'd run around 10,000 times in camp. And I know I can't, but I want to, okay? Um, we played our spring game. It's kind of a spring practice type thing that last Saturday in, in April. And for two drives, because I had a young quarterback, I called nothing but three-by-one draw stick. That's what I called every play, like six plays in a row, okay? And one time he threw the hitch, one time he handed it off, one time he threw the, the stick route, one time he handed it off, okay? Um, and he actually went down the field and scored on it. So it just made me think about how this coaching shit sometimes overrated. You know, if you got, you know, if you, and, and repetition will also overcome maybe some lack of ability in some young guys too. Okay, competitive greatness, we talked about that. Even if you have to take a cornhole out there after practice or create, you know, uh, bocce ball or those little indoor, so those little soccer nets and, and, and choose up sides someday during practice and let them play, you know, first to three, you know, soccer game or something, you know, just all the competitiveness you can create in the weight room, you know, create competitiveness amongst the guys, right? The guys that, the guys that aren't competitive enough will become competitive. You'll find out who your competitive kids are and the guys that want no part of being competitive in life. I ain't surrounding myself with those guys. All right. Let them go play in the band. All right.
Okay, create tempo, all right? If you want to, to create tempo, all right? Number one is efficient communication, all right? And that's the one thing we talk about. Everybody I always talk about all this stuff. Or any place I go, you're always asking, how do, they get to, how do you get to play in? What's the best way? What's the fastest way to communicate, all right? You know, wristbands, signals, signs. I mean, I, I mean, that could be an hour conversation with us right now, all right? And it's all, it's all a little bit um, personal, too. Okay, how every how you do it, I think it, it it kind of belongs to you, and so you're always looking for every. There's probably not a day go by it doesn't cross his my mind. All right, how can we get this thing in faster? How can we get to more one word plays? How can we change change formations and not change you know not change personnel? All right, how can we communicate this to the kids fast and efficient? Okay, keep it simple, base concepts. We're we've. We probably run about three base concepts runs. That's it. All right. Now there's a there's a handful here or there that pop up that, that we don't give, you know, that but there I wouldn't call them our base run concepts. And we've got about six to seven base pass concepts. Okay, so I mean that I mean that, that's 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 what we're gonna be. Do we if you look at our cutups, is there all this other stuff? Yeah, there's this other stuff because you know, you build some things into those base concepts versus obviously different teams. Okay, you're playing a split safety team as opposed to a post safety man team. All right, hey, I'm going to run Chevron, but on the backside, I'm going to put, you know, double slant instead of the dagger look. Okay, so just things like that. But basically, if you just if you just look at the base nuts and bolts, all right, of it, there's about three runs and probably about six pass concepts, all right, that, that are going to be there every day. And they get the most. So, and it's kind of funny because I go back and kind of in retrospect, you know, after a game or, you know, after the season and look back is when we really needed to score or we really were at our best. All right. And I look at the call sheet. It's usually those two runs and about three passes that we just keep calling. We may change the personnel, change the, put a motion or, or do something to it, but it's always comes out of this, this group of base concepts. Okay, we talked about this. Don't change the play, change the presentation. Okay, practice faster than you want to play. Talked about that already. Okay, um, put a clock, put a clock on your guys. Coach Moore is awesome with it. All right, I got 24 play a team period against the scout. 24 play team period against the scout. Okay, hey, on on Monday he may give me may give me 11 minutes to run it. Okay, by Wednesday he may give me eight minutes to run it. Okay, do I always get through them? No. All right, but we're pushing the tempo. We're pushing the tempo. Okay, wide receivers. Base rule for our wide receivers: find grass or take grass. Okay, sometimes we get caught up, and I was a receiver coach back in the day, as they say. I was as good a receiver coach as Bobby Acosta, obviously, but I was a receiver coach, and and I heard this. I learned this from Bill Belichick when he said, "Receiver has two jobs, right? Get open and catch the football. That's it." Okay. And sometimes you got to be careful that we become so, well, this is at 12 yards and put your foot in the ground and you got to come right back here and, and do this. Hey, if there's somebody in the way, go find some grass. All right. Or go take some grass someplace. Okay. So get open. All right. We've got to be lenient enough with our guys to give them a little flexibility in there. And if they understand the concept well enough, they understand where the quarterback is trying to go. All right. Where the quarterback's eyes are going. And where he needs to be, so the quarterback can find him. Okay, our quarterback has progression, not only with his eyes, but with his feet. Okay, so I think I think a lot of times the the thing I watch most when I watch when I watch practice us practice when I watch the quarterbacks is is I really don't watch watch much but his head and his eyes. All right, where are his eyes going? All right, feet fit into his eyes. Okay, um, you, I mean, you could put the GoPro on the guy's hat or, or get a camera and shoot from behind the quarterback, but he's going to curl right over here to his left, all right, and he takes the ball, and the first thing that happens is his eyes go to the right, okay? That doesn't make any sense to me, okay? So you got to train that stuff, all right? You got to explain to him what, what, you, what you want, okay? If he's throwing, say, say we're in one on one and he's throwing a, a post curl, all right, to an outside receiver, and you need to tell him, hey, Hey, he, this is your third progression, or give him the route, 
okay, so that he knows his eyes are starting on the left. He's looking at the go route. Then he's looking at the over route. And then on the second hitch, his eyes are snapping to that to that post curl route instead of him just looking at the post curl all the way back on his draw because that's not what happens in the game, okay. So you got you got to get you you got to stay on those kids too, all right. You got to train their head and their eyes and their feet, all right. When they're throwing routes on air, when they're throwing one on one, when they're throwing team. Okay, effective substitution. Okay, to me that should probably go right underneath effect, efficient communication, effective substitution. Okay, because we're a tempo team, we play a lot of guys. Okay, now you, we won't be a team that's got one receiver with a 112 catches. And I think the most I've ever had is like I've had a guy had had 79 or 82. Okay, but we're gonna have about eight guys that all have 30 plus. Okay. Because we're tempo and we got we, and, and we got to roll guys in there, all right. So because of that, all right, is becomes a real high premium on that on that redshirt freshman or that sophomore kid you got that you think is maybe 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 he's not good enough to play, all right. Well, when he starts getting in that rotation during two days in spring ball, all right. Believe me, at some point, watch it. That kid will that that kid will flash during the season and he will help your football team. All right. And it keeps him involved in what's going on. So there's not a lot of guys, you know, standing around watching his practice that are have helmets on. Okay. They're not watching the first team run a bunch of plays and then they go in there and get their two or three or whatever. Okay. If you're on our sideline, you better be, you better be focused on what's going on in practice because you may be in in two plays. I don't care if you're the third, third string freaking receiver or four string running back. It could happen. Okay, so it gets, keeps everybody involved, right? And we we basically, and I talk about this later. We basically to, to do our substitution, we we have basically the formation to this substitution, all right? So if we yell that king or queen or duel or trio or whatever, all right, that group of guys know that they're on the field, and then they know who the backup is each guy, and then who's the third guy or the swing guy in each one of those personnel packages, okay? The old line must find the ball set up quickly. We've got to limit the calls. These are all things we kind of, kind of hit on. Okay, give the ball back to the ref after each play. We put a, a ref's official jersey on our guy that spots the ball during our team. Okay, and that's one of the things that they have to hand back to the, you know, after a, the back finishes or the receiver finishes or the quarterback finishes. When he's coming back, he's got to hand that thing to the official. Not throw it to him, hand it to the official. Okay, so that guy can spot it and we get lined up and, and call the next play. Okay, because they will be, I promise you, they will be what you want them to be. Okay, and if they don't, they won't be around. Okay, if you want, if you coach for, whatever you coach for, that's what you're going to get. Okay, how we play, we create your attitude. No downtime for your opponent. Temple, practice faster, play fast. Play the next play. This, this is just kind of a summary. All right, of everything. And then on our team takeoff or any time any time our, our drives when we're when we're everything, we I saw always man kids to celebrate. There, there's a book out there, a uh, article out there called The Power of the High Five. Okay. And you know, it's like who like what came first, the chicken, the chicken or the egg type of uh, story, I believe. Okay, but if you look at championship teams, the New England Patriots, the LA Lakers, back in the day, okay, I know they're not too good now, but back when I remember them, back with Magic or the Celtics, all right, they did a study, all right, and the, the successful teams had more celebration or inter interaction amongst their players, all right, when good things happened, all right, than any of the other teams. Uh, it's probably because they were used to winning and they were winning, but it has to start someplace. So that's one thing we, you know, we're going to celebrate in practice, one on one, whatever. I'm going to let our kids are going to go crazy. Big play, shoot, our half our half our team, our offense is off the off the sideline during practice and jumping up and down on guys. All right, we want to look, we want to, we want them to celebrate. Okay, this is this is uh, a little, just a little quick. Deal um, that I talk about usually at most clinics, and because it's something that we that we do. In fact, this is this is. Let me talk about it for a second, then I'll tell you, tell you what how how I did this spring. Okay, but the difference. Okay, so we're always looking for the how do we what makes a difference in a football game. 
Okay. Number one, besides this, okay, I'm gonna go back. Okay. Number one, besides this, is is there's not a practice that goes by, all right? Because I believe football is won situationally. All right. You're gonna win football games on third down in the red zone. End of story. Okay. Anybody can call plays on first and second down. Just call a play. Okay? You put it in. You put practice in. It should be all right, right? You like it. Okay. It's what you you know. It's how your kids react and how you react on third down and how your kids react and how you react in the red zone. So there's not gonna there's always every day in practice gonna be at least one of those is gonna be a competitive period against the defense of third down and red zone, and one of those is that we're gonna work it every day. Now some days it may be more than others. Some days maybe a little bit heavier on third down than red zone, and the next day heavier on red zone and third down. But there's not gonna be a day go by that we don't talk situational football and work on situational football and let your kids take ownership in the situation. All right. It's third and four. Man, every receiver on the field and every lineman and every back and every quarterback should know it's third and four, man. We got to make it, okay? All right, we're at the 15-yard line. They should know what to expect, okay? They should know know what's what's happening, what the def- how the defense changes, okay? So the other one, the other place is we talked about goals, all right, is that you, um, you know, we've all done the goal boards. I did them for years where, hey, if I rush for two, 50 throw for 200 and you know average 4.7 on first down and complete 48 percent of my third downs and I'm 68 percent completion percentage guy and you know I mean the list goes on and on and on right you know we're all numbers you know coaches we're all like stats guys number guys um, you know then then that then we should win the football game well there's too many times on that on that board is we'd reach all those goals and we'd have an L all right or we would make a few of those goals and we'd have a win. So I was having a hard time kind of convincing my guys that if we did this, we're guaranteed to win or our chances were really high. We could win. If we didn't do them, our chances were really low. We'd lose. Now there's, I'm sure there's some correlation there, but you know, I, I could, it's not, it wasn't a tangible thing that these guys could put their, how, how do you in practice, you know, practice one of your goals of averaging 4.7 yards on first down, first down runs. You know, I mean, things like that or, or 250 yards passing today in practice. Who keeps track of that shit? All right. Not me. OK, so um, I heard this years ago from Coach Friedgen. All right. And he basically that made a ton of sense to me. I've been using it ever since. And it's probably right. I can count on and now in 10, 12 years, probably two hands now that it hasn't been right. All right. But turnovers, sacks, drop balls and foolish penalties. Okay, those are our goals. Okay, eliminate these. Okay, eliminate turnovers, eliminate sacks, eliminate drop balls, and eliminate foolish penalties. Okay, if you do that, your winning percentage goes up 92% when it's under 12% of the total plays. So, in other words, if you ran 90 offensive plays, okay, so 11 plays, 11 would be 12% of that. So, we'd like to be 10 or under. All right, 10 or under, and we feel we have our percentages it goes up to 92% of winning the football game. It makes sense because when you think, go back and really think about it, those are the things that kill you. Obviously, turnovers, everybody knows that, but sacks, now a second and 18, or a drop ball, it was, it was second and 10, and you threw the snag route in there, all right, and for six yards, and the kid drops it, and now it's third and 10 instead of third and four. Okay, and and foolish penalties, you know, pre-snap penalties, a guy jumping off sides, a guy not lining up correctly, a guy in motion, all right, those type of things. It gets you off schedule. And being a tempo team is a rhythm, you're a rhythm team, you're a rhythm offense, okay. So anything like that, when you when it backs you up, okay, or gets you out of your rhythm and gets you out of your first and ten calls and those third down calls you've been working all week, all right, kills you. And uh, I think this was all was right every time this this last year, all right. All right. Other thing is real quick. I'm kind of jumping around through this thing because we don't have I don't have a lot of time here. All right. This was an interesting thing um, with with snap counts. Okay. Is so we've all been through that thing where okay you have a rhythm of a snap count. Well, whatever ours is, you know, ready set go. All right. Ready set go. Ready set go. Ready set go. All that kind of stuff. All right. So then you say, okay, well, look at man, they're really getting a jump on us. Uh, let's change the snap count. So, um, so we're going to signal into the quarterback to go on two. 
All right. So you go on two and you got your own guys jump. All right. So you try it again a couple plays or a series later and your guys jump again. Okay. At this point, the head coach is about ready to choke your ass. Okay. And he's saying, cut, you know, don't do that on two shit anymore. Okay. Just snap the freaking ball. Okay. So I don't know if you guys had that problem, but it always seemed to happen that way because it wasn't something that really hit your brain a lot during practice. You didn't work it enough during practice and in your tempo offense right now and here your guys are going you're going you're going all of a sudden you go on two and my guys are probably going to jump okay so what we did was we tied the snap count okay into the motions all right so um example so if we were going to go some f quick or some quick motion all right then that was our quick snap count if we we're going to go tear or fast or a back motion that was our hurry hurry a regular snap count was there was no motion. And then we'd have a hard count, all right, a lightning call where we'd just come up and just give a hard count, all right, um, which I love, okay, because hard counts are good in situational football, third down and red zone, right? Go, you're going tempo, get up there quick, hard count them, they jump off sides, great, you get five yards. If not, gives you a chance to maybe see what they're doing. Oh, they're blitzing, they're man, their zone, whatever, okay, um, and gives you to, to get yourself in a good play. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to say here is we tied the snap count into the play or the formation or the motion or however you want to do it so that our kids always knew, all right, that when they heard that, that what the snap count was, a bit, what, what it was going to be, and it automatically changed our snap count. So it wasn't always the same. I don't know if you guys are interested in that, but I thought it was, was kind of cool. Okay, staff responsibilities. Well, that's IES, by the way. Okay, so we talk about situation. This is just an example from maybe a year or so ago. Okay, but and I know a lot of you guys don't have, um, you know, the with five of us on the staff, two GAs and a quality control guy and all that kind of stuff. Although I will say I got the best GA in America, all right, Marsh, all right, who's in hopefully he's in class right now. Okay, but anyway, so basically, and these are these are there's no magic to this, but what I was to do was to give a, a, a um, um, situation, all right, to each one of the assistant coaches or the guys like the quarterback coach, the receiver coach, the running back coach, the line coach, okay, that he was the expert in. In other words, for me to have him sit down there on Saturday night or Sunday when you're getting ready to game plan and watch, sit in there as a group and all of us watch freaking five full games, all right, it to me is a waste of man hour, all right? What I'd rather have our running back coach is to go in there by himself, sit down and watch what he needs to watch. Maybe he's the third and two to six guy, watch four or five games of, th th of third and two to six and come back and say, hey, man, I really like this. We need to do this. All right. Now they also know if it goes outside of our base concepts, all right, that uh, it's probably going to get nixed. But what, but what we do, this is our best thing to do against these guys. Motion this week to do this or whatever. Same thing, you know, third and seven to ten or red zone. All right. And then my old line coach. All right. Hey, what's the best ways we're going to run zone read against this front? They always set in a three technique to the boundary, to the field, to the back. All right. I just want them to kind of focus. All right, to focus in on one small area, all right, and so that they get a great feel for that. So now instead of having, you know, seven opinions in there when we're trying to put, you know, when we're game planning and all that, I got one guy coming to me and we're talking about red zone or we're talking about third down or we're talking about coming off or we're talking about, you know, shot plays or whatever it is, whatever you need. All right, and, and can and can get you some ideas. So if you get seven guys in there, you can get a ton of ideas and you ain't gonna get shit done. That's what I maybe I just wasn't a very good coordinator. I couldn't coordinate guys, but that helped me a lot. Okay, so our week in practice. This, right, real quick here, okay. Competition Tuesday, we talked about that. Ball security Wednesday. Okay. So going back to our 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 twelve percent rule that I talked about. Okay. So right here. So what I did this spring was, was pretty cool. Actually, it was Taylor's idea is, so talk about ownership. I gave each one of these turnover sacks, drop balls, and foolish penalties, I gave it to a player. Okay? So that was his responsibility after every practice. All right? Either get a coach to help you or whatever. 
all right, is to show the team, show the offense a cut up of we have three turnovers. Here's the three turnovers we had. Show the whole the whole group, okay? Because now there's accountability, right? Because now you're the guy who turned it over, and you're sitting in there with all your buddies, okay? So that's kind of embarrassing. So and then then I, then they got up there and they kind of said, hey, look it, you didn't have it high and tight. Our quarterback, man, you should have thrown this away, okay? So they were they were actually became the turnover coach, the captain of our turnovers. Okay, so they coached that through. Same thing with like our old, our center. He did sacks. Okay, whatever he deemed were sacks because maybe the protection breakdown or a technique breakdown, he would pull the he would pull the cut up. All right, put it up there. And this meeting maybe take took not even ten minutes. All right, he just kind of fire through it. But he'd jump up there and say, "Hey, Connor, man, over here. You see the guy coming off the edge. You got to make a fan call." Okay, but it really, I think it really really got ownership of our guys, um, of our players, and it got a little accountability factor going here. You know, you're kind of sur- starting to surround yourself with the guys on the same mission, right? Because now you're getting called out in front of your bros. And nobody likes to be called out in front of their bros. Okay. Now, if you're in high school, this is probably going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But so Tuesday and Wednesday, I mean, we're, we're rolling. Sweep the corners Thursday, we cut her down. It's mostly a lot of teaching, a lot of walkthrough stuff, okay? And this is what we call sweep the corners because we're going to hit all the situational stuff that could come up in the game that you never get a practice, okay? Um, you know, how many times do you throw Hail Mary during the week? How many times is the ball on a minus one yard line coming out and you have to take a knee? And if you take a knee, you win the football game or inside the one. Um, it's a two-point play uh, to win the game. It's a uh, – you know, last play of the game. You got six seconds left, down by five. Okay, um, so this that that's today we would kind of talk about those things and make sure we at least rep them once or twice. So if it did come, when it came up in the game, at least I I had the kids had an idea what what we what would get called, and and I had an idea what would get called. And most of these things, all right, are the same every week. Okay, so you're so you're throwing that you know throwing him. Mary right or hail Mary left and then jump middle or jump right, jump left, jump middle, you know, coming off or you're taking, you know, you're taking your shot play from the minus one. All right. We're going to take a post throw off this. Okay. So anyway, you just kind of sweep the corners, all the stuff that you don't, you either run out of time or you don't have time or you forget that you hit on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. That we can, you know, I mean, victory, you know, I mean, just simple, just simple shit like that that you can get that, that you can work on and sweep the corners and then then lock in Friday or fast Friday as the kids like to call it okay we get them back up and we are we are we're only out there for about an hour we're going full speed all right this is tempoed okay we are gearing up we start to, this is if we played it Saturday the game for us starts Friday morning okay so we're gonna we're gonna get going okay it's not a walk around bullshit all that kind of stuff we're gonna go have a practice and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna script about three or four drives and we'll third down in there in red zone, you know maybe a trick play or whatever we got going, and we're gonna we're gonna work on all the signals the tempo, all right. So we we, we want to be faster on Friday than we than, than than we would be in the game. So this is a normal practice for us. Okay, during the season, whoops. Okay, come out, walk through. Pre-practice drills. Uh, other other one is when you think about it. Okay, you have to be conscious of this. Okay, either pre-practice, post-practice, or during practice. Okay, is I, I'm a firm believer in you know when throwing and catching football. That's the me to you factor. You cannot get enough reps. So you may go into a a 30 play team period on your look team down here. Okay, and if you go back and watch a film, your ex receiver may not catch a football in that whole 30 plays because of how things fell. Okay? So he may go, he may go through all the practice, all, all your stuff, and catch four or five balls, maybe. Okay? So you have to pick that up. Okay? You've got to find some place I can pick up where, where this kid's got to catch at least 100 footballs today. Okay? Maybe pre practice drills, maybe post practice drills, maybe. In our individual pat and go, quick game, snag mess, I and mean, we're trying to rapid fire, and we're trying to get catches. All right, we're trying to get catches, 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 catches as much as we can, because that's how they get good at it. 
Yeah, if you go through a two-hour practice and your receiver comes out of that practice catching 25 balls, then you're doing him a disservice. All right, I got. There's some way that you got to get him him catching footballs. All right, and then team compete. There's always going to be a competitive period. There's two. All right, maybe a third down in a red zone, and then post pack practice drills. Okay, for our receivers or backs or your court, whatever. All right. And that's just kind of what it looks. All right, so I'm going to jump out of this. Which, there you go. Okay, Mike, are you still there? Coach, Coach, I'm here. Mike. Can you hear me okay? Okay, we're doing, all, we're doing good? Yeah, we're doing good, Coach. Okay, so, um, whoops. Hold on. Coach, while you're finding that, I'm just going to say something here real quick. Guys, if you have yeah. questions, don't forget to type them in the questions box in your GoToWebinar control panel. We had a couple that came up already, but just want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity. If you have any questions for Coach, you can ask them there, and we'll ask them here at the end when, when uh, Coach is all done. Okay, I'm going to go through this real quick. So I'm going to show you a part. part of this. Now, this is Coach Marsh. He's a stud. Okay. But I'm going to kind of give you an example of our of, of the of the end zone playbook and, and kind of all the stuff. You know, I talked a little bit along on philosophy, but that's because I believe in it. All right, I got to get back to the start of this thing, Marsh. Okay, let me see. I don't know how to make this thing big. Do you? Did I make this thing big, Mike? Click the, click the green. Can you see that? Green circle, top left. Oh, I got you. Bam, you are, you are the man. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is just kind of stuff we talked about already, you know. Okay, 12% rule, objective, you know, the building box, keys. Is, you know, I kind of just went through all this, this stuff, okay. Um, And guys, here was the purpose of this whole thing is I've done 35 years of this, and I've had a chance to be around some, like, amazing football coaches, all right? I mean, guys that are really good football coaches, not only, you know, on the board in the classroom but on the field. And I've, I've sat in hundreds of, you know, jump in my car and drive and watch Glacier Clinics and, you know, go watch guys practice, go to OTAs, you know, as much as I can. So, you know – I you know I didn't think up any of this stuff. This is all just stuff I've I, I collected over the years and thoughts and and uh, um, stuff I've learned from other people and they were kind enough to share with me. Okay, um, sometimes it costs a lot of money to buy plane tickets to go learn something, but you know I thought it was worth it. Um, so um, so this was just kind of my thought when this whole started was just kind of give back as as much instead of just say hey, here's a playbook here. I mean. Anybody can turn a film on, and I can I can put any offense on a film, and I can draw all the plays. That's not tough, okay? And there's a ton of great offenses, better offenses, you know, out there. Um, but uh, the point of this was was all the all the stuff that went with it, okay? How you coach it, how you you know how you treat your kids, what you do with your kids, how you know, the things you ask them to do, things you ask your coaches to do, how you practice, um, you know, all those type of things. And, and I mean, we could go on all night, you know. And hopefully, I think uh, I think Michael's got some of these dive deep clinics we're going to start this year, right, Michael? Where we can do some of this stuff. But anyway, um, so Coach Marsh and myself and Bobby, all right, we've been working on these teach tapes and um, you know how how it works and what the thought is and why you're calling things. But anyway, so that's that's kind of what all this was. You know, game planning, best player, worst player, what they do last year, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, when you when you look at this stuff, guys, this is basically just a, a library, okay? Just a menu. Would, would I go into a game with all these formations? Hell no, okay? But this is changing the presentation, okay? So these are these are all the different types of formations that, 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 that we would get into, all right? And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. I want to get to some of the drawings, okay? 
uh, by personnel, all right, you know, King Queen, which is a tight end attached or, or attached in the wing or on the ball, all right, like their flex, Trey. So th this was just like a, a glossary. So, hey, let's run this, let's, let's get Trey in this week. Let's run zone read out of Trey instead of Trio, okay, because they're a, because they're a, a three a three four team, and we don't have to worry about the other conflict backer, you know things like that. Okay. okay. This. Okay. Then our mold we talked about. See that that's where our best job is. We create a ton of formations. All right, with our quick motions by our backs and by our slots. All right. I never understood why you take you know and we do it sometimes right. But why, why you take a guy and you, from on one side of the field, you motion him all the way across the formation to the other side of the field and then sit there for a second, giving time for the defense to adjust, okay, and change their coverage or run a guy over or spin the secondary or whatever, okay, and then call a play. Well, shit, just line him up over there in the first place and call a damn play, okay? Where I think it gives defenses problems are quick motions. So it's like it's ready, the motion starts, and the ball snapped, Okay. I really, I really like the stuff we do out of that. So this, this is just the different ways we, we tear, you know, our motions, you know, empty, empty our back, all right, fast motions. And I know I'm going fast here, guys, but I'm running out of time because I want to get some of the drawings, okay? Free motion. So anyway, motions I think are like a key to us, all right? Our quicks and our ghosts because any motion you look at, okay? Whether this F starts from here and that ball snapped when he's at the outside leg of this tackle, right here, okay, all right. Or if it's ghost, he snapped right here. Quick, he snapped right there, all right. But any motion, whether if it's ghost or if we're in trio and we're going ghost or quick the other way, everybody's always building two by twos or three by threes, three by ones, okay. So that's all we're doing, just different ways to change the presentation to get to our two by two or three by one, whether it's tight ends attached or not. Oh, that's not a word right there. Okay, so base play for us. All right. Um, how much time have I got, Mike? Coach, we're uh, technically out huh? of time. We're technically out of time, but Michael, can you hear me? Okay. We're out of time. Well, we are. Can we keep going. But, but yeah, keep going, Coach. Everybody, you've only you only lost two people, so you can, I'd say you're good. Okay. So give me a second. Okay. Here. All right. Now you guys all know my web six six seven. That's right. Access code. Oh wait. Three O. Let's try that one. Okay, let me try it again. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I did look at the wrong one. One seven one four nine one. Okay, there we go. I want to pull one of these out real quick. Okay, run. Mm. Here we go. Okay, so zone read, all right? 
this is right off our okay zone read sitting in this is kind of a little bit redundant I'm sure for some of you guys but I'm just kind of giving an example of how we set it up for our kids as a teach tape okay zone read six defenders in conflict okay built in key screens locks quick game fifth five in a box key to six defender six in the box read the six defender obviously five in the box it's a hat on a hat we're just controlling the wheel and the sand backer probably split safety okay six in the box probably post safety okay now our tackle has to sift okay and we're gonna read the end okay and now ways we're gonna protect this thing okay so anyway here's the drawing so you can kinda see we've got these screenshots of all right of here's Zorro even versus a 4-1 look so basically what Brett's doing right here is he's controlling these conflict guys on the edge all right with some sort of a key screen quick game um, you know whatever you want out there some way to put those guys in conflict okay oh this is cool I didn't know this is the one this is my new drawing here okay this is a new 3d drawing we're working on all right so you can see there's there there it is against the 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 there he is throwing the key screen so if you go back so you know our guys are like all into Madden so as you go back right here he knows all right we got five we got five on we got hat on a hat in here okay here's the conflict player split safety all right here's the conflict player that the quarterback's looking at okay if he plays a key screen we're giving it all right now here's the next one same thing here's the conflict guy he's playing it ball so it's just a real simple teaching tool okay now we get to the real well, we get to the real film here that's just more 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 stuff against different fronts here's the same look from the top all right which is pretty cool okay so you got your 4-1 box okay here's the guy in conflict split safeties okay these guys know he's based all right we're pinching to him base base Quarterback knows he's here's a guy in conflict. He's either gonna stop the run or stop the key screen out there. Anyway, that was pretty cool. I want to get some real film here. Okay, so here's exactly what I just showed you. Okay, now we this is I think from two years ago, so we adjusted our tackle. But there's your four one box split safeties. Okay, so here's the guys in conflict. This guy right here, all right, right there. Okay, and this guy right there. Okay, so we know we know the line is working four down to Mike. We know Brett now. Because this guy is going to block, and we're going to throw it probably on this one a key screen. Now you can throw slant flat, you can throw hitches, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But he knows he's reading the conflict guy. All right. So his eyes should be right there. So this guy has to decide um, because I've got a hat on a hat. All right. This guy has to decide, am I going to play the back or I'm going to play the screen? Okay, now, what we've changed when you see the end zone, which I like better this year, we used to sift our tackle, okay? So you can see hat on a hat, hat on a hat, hat on a hat, hat, all right? We used to sift our tackle even with the, with the conflict guy outside the box. So we would go vertical with him, all right? And then when this guy showed up, release to block him. We've since changed that. We're just going to go ahead and base him, okay? Make this guy come in here and make the tackle. The only time he'll sift, all right, that tackle will sift is if this wheel backer, this wheel backer gets in this gray area, okay? So the gray area is anywhere where he's almost stacked the outside leg of this end. Now we can sift this thing, okay? Because what's probably going to happen is, is if they're doing that, either they're going to give us the key, they're giving us the key screen right now, or they're rolling the coverage down. All right, they're rolling it down to play post safety on us.
So right there, he should have stayed on that. Same thing. Forty-eight is in conflict. In conflict. All right. We're four down. All right, right to here. Okay. Now, if this guy was, he would sift this. Sift tackle means that he's going to play through the end. All right, and release the end if this guy shows up. He's sifting, just like in pass protection, a vertical set. When you sift, you sift. You take the most dangerous two. Okay, he's out of the box. That should just be based out right there. You can even see this is they're still used to it. You see how his head is. He should have just been right there on this guy. All right, there's the space. Create space. Okay, I'm going I'm to try to find out some with the motion. Okay, so same thing. Okay, so we're just building three by one. Okay, so here's blue, tear. Okay, blue, tear. Okay, six in the box. Okay, six in the box. Post safety, yes, they're going to three buzz. All right, so now the line knows we've got the f those three to the play side backer. Okay, he's there, and he's either making a squeeze call or he's through to here. And now the quarterback will read this, this guy. Because see his conflict backers in the box. That should tell him post safety. So now Brett knows I have to read this guy right there. Instead of a conflict, instead of a key, it's a read. Okay. There's the squeeze on the back side. Three technique tells him squeeze. Okay, right there. So they know, all right, one of these guys is an A-gap player, one's a, one's a B-gap player. So now we're going to squeeze this. So he basically becomes a Sith guard now, all right, because now he's got to get through to the, to the linebacker, and we need to take this over. So they're going to build the wall. Ball should hit, all right. Press, press, press. Ball should hit somewhere from this, from here that way. All right. Here's what Brett's looking at. The end. Okay, that's just what he should be. He wants to. He wants to stay square. Hand the ball off. This is actually back-to-back -back plays right here. In fact, actually, it was three in a row, same play. So that, that was actually a drive right there, three-play drive. Same play, every time. See him play the A-gap now? Okay. So he takes it. So now he's declared. He cho he chose me. I choose him. So now the tackle. He should be through to the backer right here. Here's what here's still what Brett's reading right there. Okay, got a hat, a hat, and a hat. Nice job. Okay, real quick here. Is there still anybody on here? Yeah, coach, they're still they're still with us. Still with us? Okay, so now I want to show the other part of this. Okay.
Wait, I didn't make it big, huh? What happened? Let me go back. Okay. I think I, ju I just pulled out some comments here. Oh, here we go. Dang it. Should I find one up here? Here we go. That's what I was looking for anyway. Okay, so now, here's the play, right? Okay, here's the play. The one I just showed you three shots of, okay? Green, tear, Zoro Odd, Comet, okay? One word play for us. Just give it a word, okay? Everybody knows what they're doing, okay? Uh, green goes green, the formation is to the right, plays going to the left, blue, the formation to the left, plays going to the right, okay? On this side, this is a, what we call a gift. We're going to put him on a hitch. Okay, because with this motion, if they want to keep this guy in the box and they want to spin the safeties down this way to it, then I, we're going to let my quarterback go ahead and throw this hitch route over here. Okay, if not, this is six in the box. He should be reading this end right there. Okay, if the end doesn't close, okay, then he should be giving the ball because we got numbers. If the end closes, Brett's going to pull it. Okay, and now if he, he closes, they're wrapping this backer to him. He becomes the conflict. If he takes the quarterback, the ball goes out here to the back, okay, because we got both these guys blocked. So I think there's a couple shots of it in here. Okay, so here's green tear, okay. Good, good. He snapped this a little bit. Let me go back. I'll go to the next one. He snapped this a little late, okay. That's where you want the ball snapped right there. Well, right now, Brett knows he's got numbers, okay? He has sent the motion, and ain't nobody moved, okay? I'm, all he's got to do is make sure this guy doesn't come straight up the field, okay? So he knows I've got a block here and a block there. I want the ball out here because there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven guys in the box. Screw it. I don't want to hand it off. Although you still probably could have handed it off on this one, but put the ball in your playmaker's space and your playmaker's hands in space. Okay, this is the same thing, guys. All right, don't change the play, change the presentation. Instead of green tear. Let's go dual F quick or F ghost. We're still building the three by one. All right. He knows this is a three down front. So in a three down front, we always want to go fan, reach, base. They're, 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 are, they're the three down to the, to the wheel backer, to the play side backer. Okay, Brett, this is the guy you're looking at. Okay. Because either he better add himself to this motion and let you hand it off, or if he doesn't, all right, you can throw it, and we're going to throw this this swing screen out there because those are two blocks. Love this play against three down fronts. Here's F quick. His eye should be right on this guy right here. He probably looks like he's pretty close. He's a pretty damn good quarterback now. Okay, That's who he should be looking at. He's in conflict. If he takes the run, ball's coming out. If he goes with the motion, which he should have, okay, we're handing the ball off and we got numbers. Now, this is like our run game, okay? So these throws and all that, this is first and second down stuff right here, okay? There you go, fam. Reach, okay? Here's your conflict guy. Right there, all right? Now, for some reason, let's say, whoops. I'll go to the next one here. Uh, I don't know why this one's on there.
they still got to tackle us. All right. Now what? When he's when he he was this. Okay. All right. Now we've adjusted this backside, which I don't have time to talk about. We've adjusted this backside route. Okay. But but this, what this example is to me is, okay. If they want, they're they're spinning the safety down right now. Okay. So now my next thought would be, if they want to spin the safety down and play this comet screen this hard. Okay. My next thought would be, okay, I'm going to run the, the show protection, which looks like Zorro show protection, which should look just like this to everybody. But now I'm going to go verticals. All right. That protects the comet throw. So that's just a, instead of a key, it's a lock. See how hard they're running up on the, on the comets. Get there. And these are all these are all just different looks. Here's Green Tear. A little late. He's late. See how see how he had to wait? He's late with the snap. You want that ball really snapped? I think this is a pretty good one. You want that ball snapped right there. When that back's right there. Okay. So it's a it's it, you 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 know instead of calling screen, what if they're covered two and all that shit? I wish I hadn't called screen. Okay, I wish I'd called the run. Okay, oh I called the run. There's six in the box, seven in the box. Oh I wish I'd called the screen. Okay, instead of doing that, all right, it's just the combination. It's, it's just an ROP, right? Run pass RPO, run pass option. Okay. Mike, any questions? Yeah, Coach. We uh, we actually have quite a few. If you have some time here, All right, let's do it. we'll work through. Are they uh, charging us extra for going overtime? <laughs> I, I might have to. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get into some of these questions here real quick. Um, okay. All right, so Coach asks, is it not too much for the quarterback to read the conflict backer, then get his eyes out to the perimeter and read a defender on quick game? Uh, in your example, you specifically put a man beater outside, quarterback reads outside linebacker, and then has to get his eyes in the corner? So I guess he's asking uh, – you know, do you find it challenging for them to read inside to outside? Too much going on too fast. No. No. So let's let, let me see. He's talking about the zone read. Let's look right here. Let's here we go. Okay, to answer his question. Now, you, now remember, this is our, this is the world we live in. Okay, this is basically what he's saying. We're reading a conflict guy, right? We're reading a conflict guy. Okay. Let me get to a. Okay, so obviously this is a three down front. So, and granted, okay, this kid, this kid's been doing this for three years as quarterback, and I'm not going to argue that point. Okay, but this is this is our offense. Okay, so it's no different than him than you teaching a quarterback to read anything. All right. The good thing about this, that's why the one of the points I made was you train his eyes and you train his feet. Okay. You got to, he's got to get his eyes, and it's basically an A to B decision for him. All right. So here's a key screen outside. So we put a key screen right here for him. This guy's going to block for the key screen. So he knows this. Here's his con. Let me go back a little bit. It's a good question. Really good question. So now this guy's like schooled. I mean, most guys probably wouldn't have thrown this, but he did. Okay. But. Um, it's probably the hardest one we could have picked. But he saw this guy up on the line, so he had a pre-snap look. He knew pre-snap look that he was throwing this because that guy looks open. It's like we have this rule we call the IHO rule. It, yeah, he looks open. It's like eight, nine, ten yards off, okay? And, this, and his conflict backer is tucked in the box. 
So I promise you, Brett right here, he's decided already before he even looks at anything that he's going to show this little flash hold him and he's going to throw the ball out there. So like I said, this probably isn't a great one to great one to, to show you. All right, but you can see you can see Brett's. See, I mean, he wasn't reading anything there. He knew I wanted to throw it out there to him. So that's a pre-snap look. He's already decided that's where the ball's going. Okay. Okay, let's find one where he reads it. Okay, here is all right, pre-snap look, right? One, two, three, one, two. All right. He can, you know, we, we like our guys to get that little token just to kind of freeze everybody, but he knows this ball ought to be coming out right now to this guy. All right. This is trio right, Zoro odd, key two. Okay. Instead of putting the guy here in motion into it, like you saw me just show you, all right, we're just going to line up in it. Everybody's going to do the same thing, except now this guy's just going to back into it right there. So the throws is quarterback. Okay. He knows six in the box. All right. So he looks, hey, wait, there's split safeties and six in the box. All right, IHO, is he open? Yeah. There's, I got three, you got two. So he knows this ball should be coming out right now. Jerry knows this ball should be coming out right now. Okay, so that's pretty simple, okay? So that's the easy part, right? Because that's just look out there. I got more guys than they got. Or that, you, know, you, you teach them post safety, split safety, number in the box. That's all you have to teach them, all right? Okay, let's find one where he has to read it. Okay, so here he comes. Now, we teach our quarterbacks, all right? So let's see. Let me, let's go to the end zone. Okay, it looks like a three down front. Yes, three down front. So you can see everybody. So Brett knows by alignment, this is the guy he's looking at, okay? Okay. Okay. So I mean, I mean, to answer your question, he's not having to read and then pull and and he does sometimes, but I'm telling you, most times out of not, it shows itself. It shows it right away because these guys are fan. Remember, we talked about a three down. Okay. These guys are reaching great angles, right? He's basing. Okay. So Brett knows this guy is the conflict backer by alignment. He knows I'm pulling this ball. Yeah, he hasn't even had to ride and read anything yet. He does, but he knows what he's doing, all right? I mean, that's just kind of like, hey, here it is. It's like, here's the cheese, right? Now, now we, all, we teach our quarterbacks, all right, run to throw. So his thought is, I'm, I'm attacking the alley because they better have a quarterback player. Because if they don't have a quarterback player, this cat's going to rush for two. I don't care how fast he is. All right, this happened to be a fast one. I did it with a six seven guy. All right, they still have to respect him. Okay, so one of these secondary defenders, backers, outside back or whatever, has to show up to take the quarterback. Okay, when that happens, ball comes out. Oh, there's some old stuff here. Oh, this is this year. Okay, so here's the read. Let's go to the end zone because it's, it's probably helping you more. It, it, but what I can see is that, that what, what I'm trying to show you is, like, the majority of his decisions are made, like, right at the snap. He knows at the snap what's going on, okay? We, we went ahead and put fast motion to get to If this guy hadn't have gone out there, this is what we call the gift, okay? I don't know if you can see it. If this guy hadn't have, so this guy should be blocking here. I mean, it's like it's like you know you asking a wishbone guy. Is it hard for a quarterback to triple triple read? Yeah, it takes repetition. That's why wishbone teams run about three plays, right? Give the fullback read the end, pitch it or run, okay? And that's kind of like we are, man. You got to rep it, rep it, rep it. The other thing I don't do is I never second guess him, okay? You should have thrown it and you handed it off, or you should have handed it off and you threw it. Hey, just keep just keep repping it, man. He'll he'll start to figure it out, and now he's now he's running the. Now, he's controlling the defense, all right? What we do, other thing we do is during practice is we put a, we put a red, uh, yellow jersey or a red jersey on this guy, and we put yellow jerseys, you know, those little pennies, pennies, what do they call them, on these guys. So we know, hey, the line's working to this guy, Brett. 
All right, you're controlling these two guys, and most of the time they show you before, right before the snap or before the snap, and you know what you're going to do. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So we wanted to split safety, right? So we're building dual two by two. Okay, so we're going to throw a, con a swing screen out here to this guy. Okay, and we're going to throw a key screen to this guy in the boundary, right there. He knows, Brett knows, I have to control these two guys. All right. Well, if we send this motion, if he doesn't go, he's throwing it to this guy, because now we got what we want. It gets him out of the box, so he leaves the box. Good. So now all Brett knows is, all right, is that one of these guys, okay, this end right there, okay, and this one he probably could have handed it off, okay, but he sees the split safeties, all right. This end right here is his only read. If he takes me, pull it. If he comes up the field, give it. Now. He's going to make me a liar right here, but that's how it should have been. You know, so he threw it instead of handing it off. Yeah, we're, you know, hey, get the ball to your playmakers in space, all right, and let them create for you. So here we go. We're here to here to here. Okay, squeeze to number four. See how wide that end is out there? But to him, pre-snap look is this key was already open because of this guy's alignment. Okay, so he just said, screw it, man. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't know. If, is it, does he think this is answering the question, Mike? Yeah, yeah, good. And actually, uh, let's got a, got a bunch of questions coming in here. Uh, another question, Coach, is what is a yeah. running back's aiming point against an odd front when running Zorro? Oh, nice question. Perfect. I got the perfect cut up for you, too. Okay, here's 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 the running backs deal, okay? First thing we want to do is we call it a search. Coach KP calls it a search step, okay? So that means it's a tempoed step. You know, some people call it an, o an open step, whatever. But he wants to take a search step. Okay, so he he wants to allow he got to get that time the line a, a time to get their hat their fits. Okay, plus the other thing he wants to do is make sure that the snap is good as the quarterback, everything's going good. So we call it a search step. It's tempo. Okay, then what he wants to do so this is Zorro even over here. Okay, what he what he wants to do is press. All right, the play side butt cheek hip of the center, right there. Because what he needs to get to do is he needs these guys to start to get to their run fits, okay? So he wants all these guys to start to get to the run fits. Okay, so our base here, you know, we've got great angles against the three down front on the block. Okay, number one mistake most backs make is they start to they they they're, they're going to feel the hole back here, okay? And so they want to go. Search step, and then they start to cut it back. You can't. You gotta, you gotta get them to press it. All right, to press it, press it, press it, and then light a match off that freaking guard or center's ass if you, if you, if the cutback's there. Okay, because that's where your big plays come from. So that's his aiming point. All right, it's play side hip. All right, of the center. All right. Now, if there's a shade. All right. If there's a if it's a uh, even, which you could call this an even front, I guess. Okay. But if the shade is to the center on this side, okay, doesn't matter. He still has to press that to get that shade to play his gap. So it's all about the back is all tempoed, and it's all about you forcing the defense, okay, to get their hats in the gaps that they've been coached to get their hats in. Okay. Because what kills you on this play is this. As a back starts to do this and he cuts it back, and this backer or a backside backer's got the Mike's got this a gap and he sees it and then he he rocks back to this, then he's he's killing our guards, our center. He's not letting those guys get in. He's not he's got to let those backers get into the line of scrimmage. Great. Right. Next one. All right. So uh, you, you talked about fast communication up front. What do your O linemen have for line calls on a Zorro? Okay, so here's what it go. Let me see. Let me find one here.
Okay, so if we're, if we're running this right there, okay, whoops, we'll do this one. God dang it. Sorry, guys. Try and get to the freaking end zone. Okay, right here, right? Three down front, man out here. Right tackle is going to yell, fan. That's it. Fan means automatic reach, base to backside. So that's all. That's the only line call that gets called right there. Fan or out or whatever you want to use, okay? He makes the same calls in run that he does in pass, okay? He just says, fan, all right? That tells everybody else. He just tells everybody what I'm doing, okay? He's telling everybody, hey, fan, meaning I'm leaving, man. I'm out here. I'm fanning out to this guy. Okay, oh, it means I got a fan with you. Oh, it means I got to reach to this guy. Oh, shit, those guys, that guard's leaving over there? I got a base. Okay, so that would be that 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 would be that front. Okay, let's look at it. Let's find an even front. Okay, right there, even front, okay? Well, these guys know what they're doing. No, nothing said, okay? He might say, he might tell this guy, read, okay? He might just tell the center, hey, read. In other words, I'm going to just hand help you, but I'm the 58. So we're reading the 58. But the only thing that really has to be said right here is they should understand that part of it, okay? Because if this was to a three technique and he was right there, there would be no read. He would have the three, he would have the five, the center would be right now the backer, okay? So just a read tells you, hey, hey, I'm, you know, you and I, we're going to work this guy off to 58, okay? But that should be understood. Only thing that gets said right here is by the guard, all right? So the only thing that would be said by the line right here would be squeeze, okay? Squeeze means this is I'm becoming the sift guy, okay? So now I'm sifting the three technique because I've got to get to number four because, hey, left tackle, you can't get to him, all right? If he played out into here and he went there, there's no way you're blocking four. So he just say, squeeze, all right? That would tell him, hey, you come with me. We're squeezing this three technique off to number four. Love it, love it. Stay on the double team. All right. I think that answers that. So, so try, we try to keep our calls limited, all right? Basically, one word kind of tells all five of these guys what to do. But, I mean, there's only so many, there's, there's only so many fronts, right? You got a four-down front. You just got to tell a guy, hey, read or pinch. Read, place side guards work with the center. Pinch, backside guards work with the center. Right tackle, he says, he can, the uh, tackle can say, say fan, all right? Or doesn't say anything at all. The guards should say squeeze. So they should understand the front they're blocking. Okay. And the only other thing that, that, that gets said, and it's the same for pass, that we don't want to change our calls for pass. And the only other thing we get that, that gives probably a different call is when we get a bear front, a 5-1 five, five front. Okay. And then there, it's automatic foos. All right. So right there, the center will just say bear, 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 and MBA or 5-0 or whatever. And that just tells everybody we're foozing, which is just full zoning. So as you can see, it's pretty minimal. All right, next question, Mike. Okay. So um, time-wise, I think we have time for one more question. And then I think we should do this. There's still a, a, quite a few really, really good questions. Maybe we'll uh, send those to you to get answered, and then we can send them out to these guys. Um, yeah, just send, send them to me, Mike, and send them back to you, and you just send them out. Okay. So, so guys, for anybody who doesn't get your question answered tonight – I've got a list of emails for everybody who registered, and we'll get these answered and fired back to you. But we'll finish up with this question tonight. Uh, Coach asks, how do you communicate your plays from the sideline to skills? <laughs> I, love the, I love those. I love that shit. You got time for me to go get one more beer out of the fridge? <laughs> go for it, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna, let me see here. I'm gonna let me find a play.
Okay. Well, well, I don't know. Is there any guy? Is there anybody still? Is there any guy still listening? Yeah, there is. You got anybody left on here? Oh yeah. Okay, because so you guys were here with us earlier. We talked about. I just I'm, I'm going to answer that question in one second, but I want to show this. This came up. Okay. So conflict, right? Conflict. Okay, split safety, 4-1 box, conflict, conflict. Don't ask me why he threw this, all right? Okay, conflict, conflict, okay, hat on a hat in here. Remember the tackle I talked about? We just base it now. There's no there's no sit tackle because the guy's not in that gray area. He's, he's way out there, okay? So right here, Brett knows this. By alignment, he has nothing in the boundary. By alignment right here. So he's pretty much eliminated this side, okay? The guy who asked a question about, is it hard for your quarterback? Okay. So now all he has to do is he knows, all I got to do is look at this guy on the read. Okay. If he wants to run in here, I can pull and throw this. All right. If he wants to stay out there, I should hand it off. It's that simple. It really is. Okay. Now, I don't know why he didn't hand this off. There's another one of the things. I don't yell at him. This is what he decided. This is what he saw. All right. I guess he wanted to throw it to his buddy out there for first down. I don't know. But if you watch the end zone, okay, you got exactly what you want. I would love for him to hand this thing off. Right there. Okay. Now, you asked also about the, the back. Okay. Okay. This is the search step. Now, he's a little different. He shuffles. Okay. And every kid's a little different, and I never really get on his ass much about it. Okay, but he shuffles, but you, you can see that tempo of the shuffle or the open or the tempo or the search step, the open step, the shuffle step. All right, but you see how it allows now for us to get our hats, our hats fitted, and for linebackers now to start to 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 fill their gap responsibilities. Okay, now back to that question. So this play right here. Okay, so we're gonna have. Anywhere from, I'm not gonna give you a number, but we're gonna have we're gonna have one word plays, okay? So it could be uh, it could be um, Superman, Batman, Robin, uh, you know, Hulk, whatever, Iron Man, okay? So I I, I try to I, I try to you know give them categories, okay? Well that may be all um, zone read plays, okay? And each one would also tell them the formation. So this formation is really dark, but we never signal or say dark, okay? Let's just say this was Iron Man. We would just say Iron Man, okay? That would encompass the whole play. So there would be an Iron Man signal. Now, how we get it done is, okay, is that the guys to the field over here have somebody they're looking at, okay? Because basically, all right, they see Iron Man, they know they're running key two. All right, these guys have somebody they're looking at to the boundary, all right, and then the inside, he's obviously getting the signals, okay. Now, we've tried with the O-line, don't like it as much, okay, and so basically all he's stepping up and he's just saying Iron Man in a direction, Iron Man odd, Iron Man three, Iron Man 55, Iron, whatever, whatever however you want to decide your, your directional numbers or calls are. So that's how that would get signaled right here. Very quick. You know, Iron Man and three. All right. Nothing gets said by these guys except the quarterback telling them, hey, Iron Man three, Iron Man three. Okay. Back already knows. Everybody else knows. Now, if we were going to call this regularly, okay, without a one word play, all right, it would be the same thing. Okay. But instead of getting Iron Man out here, all these guys would get would be a key two signal. Okay. Key two meaning we're throwing the quick screen, the receiver screen to, to the number two guy, this guy, and you're blocking. So basically, the guy signaling him, he he heard Iron Man. He could give those guys just key two. He wouldn't have to give them the Iron Man. So it lets us change. So different signals are coming in all the time, all right? Because these guys don't really care what the play is. They don't care if we're running draw, if we're running. Zorro, zone read, if we're running power, if we're whatever we're running. All they know is they, they look over and they get, hey, key two. That's all I got to run, key two. Okay? These guys 
get sang or they get block on or they get key one or whatever. Okay, and the signal goes to him. Hey, Zorro, even it's like Iron Man two. He would just step up and tell these guys, hey, Zorro, even or Zorro two. All right, and the back stand right next to him, so obviously he knows the play. And I actually think our running back coach gives him a bunch of signals on motions and stuff. So, so basically, uh, there's there's a group of guys, and you br and you break it up into into groups, right? Okay, I got somebody getting it to these guys, somebody getting it to these guys, and somebody getting it to these guys. All right, Michael, if you want me out, I'm done. <laughs> Hey, Coach, great job tonight. That was a ton of information you went through. You know, great, great webinar. So I really appreciate it. Um, I did go ahead and forward all the questions to you and Marsh and to Bobby. Uh, once we get those answered, we'll send them out to everybody uh, who's still on the call. We'll be sure to include both the questions and the answers so you guys get the, the full benefit of uh, the all the information. Outside of that, guys, again, this was recorded tonight. Once uh, once we're all done and we get everything uploaded, we'll send this recording to you so you can watch it again if you want. Outside of that, um, the End Zone System is part of Championship Coaching Systems. You can check it out at championshipsystems.com where you get access to webinars uh, every week on Wednesday nights, um, members forums where you can ask questions to coaches that are running the system like you are, playbooks, install schedules, you know, the whole nine yards of how to run the system, everything you need to run in zone is on there. So, so go check it out again, championshipsystems.com. And uh, thanks again for attending. We'll see you next time. Thanks coach. You bet, man. Thanks, Michael. Call me. I'll do it.